In the 1600s, physicist Robert Hooke experimented with transmitting sound using a simple piece of string. We can replicate his experiment using the classic tin can telephone. Using a hammer and a nail, punch a hole in the bottom of two empty cans. Take a piece of string, such as kite string, and poke it through the hole. Tie the end of it into a knot big enough so that it won't be pulled through the can. Repeat this for the other can. And now you have a very simple mechanical telephone. Hmm, I wonder who I should call. The trick is to hold the can so that the string is pulled taut. Now, when you talk into the can, the string will then begin to vibrate, creating a mechanical representation of the sound wave. Uh, hello. Yes, I'd like to order a pizza for delivery, please. One large Hawaiian. Extra pineapple. What? I think you've got the wrong number. Also, pineapple on pizza is disgusting. Our tin can telephone is able to convert a sound wave into a mechanical signal on a piece of string. What happens if we take that sound wave and instead convert it to an electrical signal? Well, we'd get a microphone, just like the little one I've got here. When we talked about speakers, we showed how an electrical current generates a magnetic field in this coil of wire. As the electrical current changes direction, the coil becomes an electromagnet that swaps its polarity. This causes the coil to be attracted to and repelled from the donut-shaped permanent magnet over and over again. If we attach a cone, known as a diaphragm, to the coil, we can produce sound waves. As it turns out, a microphone is the same thing, but backwards. Weird, right? As it turns out, all speakers are microphones, and all microphones can pretty much be used as speakers. It just depends on how you use them. Most microphones have the same parts of a speaker. When a sound wave hits the diaphragm, it causes the diaphragm to start moving back and forth. The diaphragm is attached to a coil of wire, so as the coil of wire moves in and out of the permanent magnet, an electrical current is generated in the wire, which we can measure. Here I've got an oscilloscope, which is a tool that lets me measure voltage as it changes over time. I'm going to connect my oscilloscope to the speaker so that when I talk into the speaker, I'll be able to measure the voltage that's created. As sound waves hit the speaker's diaphragm, it moves a coil of wire in and out of the permanent magnet. This generates electricity in the coil, which we'll be able to measure on these wires. As I talk into the speaker, you can see the sound waves represented as recorded electrical signals in the computer. If we were to capture and save this signal, you would have a recording of my voice. As it turns out, the Circuit Playground Express has a built-in microphone, which is this little silver box on the front of the board. We don't have a good way to record sound with the Circuit Playground Express, but we can make a light display that reacts to sound volume. In MakeCode, go into Light and drag a graph block to Forever. From Input, get a Sound Level block and snap it into the graph block. The Sound Level block gives us an idea of how loud it is around the Circuit Playground Express's microphone. It will give us 0 if it's completely quiet and 255 if it's really loud. In the simulator, try moving the slider, which represents relative sound level. Notice that we didn't even need to use the map function or perform any fancy math. The graph block automatically knows how to scale the sound level for us so that the appropriate number of LEDs are lit up. Download this program and copy it to your Circuit Playground Express. At rest, about half the LEDs should be lit up. Whenever you make a loud sound near the board, you should see more LEDs light up. Add a battery and some string, and you've got this sweet interactive necklace. As I talk, you should see the lights start to jump around. Any other sound in the nearby area, like music, should result in the same effect. Wear this out, and you'll be the talk of the town.